We're going to build a simple program that will ask a user how many coin flips they'd like the computer to perform and then have the computer actually do it. At the end, the user will get a printout of how many heads and tails came out. A coin flip is supposed to be a random event with a 50% chance of landing on heads and a 50% chance of landing on tails. So we need to find a way to create this randomness. Most, if not all, programming languages have built-in functionality to generate a pseudo-random number. Let's find out how to do so in JavaScript. I'm going to Google JavaScript random number. And let's look at the first result, the W3Schools one. It says that the function math.random returns a number between 0 inclusive and 1 exclusive. So that means we can get back 0, but we can't get back 1. If we scroll down just a little bit, we can see how to generate numbers between certain values. So it looks like we have to multiply the number returned by math.random by a number and then use another function, math.floor, around all of this. So if we want a number between 0 and 9, we have to multiply it by 10 for a total of 10 different numbers. If we want a number between 0 and 10, we got to multiply it by 11 because that's 11 numbers. So the pattern that we're seeing is that we have to multiply the result from math.random by how many different values we want. So let's see this in action and figure out why that is. I'm back at REPL.IT and I'm going to open up HTML, CSS, and JS again to create a website environment. So let's make sure we go to script.js and open up the console so we can see our results. So let's try typing in math.random with open and closing parentheses to run or execute that function. And when we hit run, nothing happens. Duh, because we didn't display anything to the console. So let's put math.random inside of the input for console.log. And now if I run it, I should get a number between 0 and 1, but it can't be 1. So we see like these really long decimal numbers. Now recall that they multiply this value by a certain number, and then they put everything inside of math.floor. So I want to see what math.floor actually does. So let me Google JavaScript math.floor and see what comes up. If I click on the MDN link, the first result, we can see that math.floor returns the largest integer less than or equal to a given number. So it rounds down. So even if I have a number like, let's say, console, let me console.log a number here. So if I do math.floor on 3.9999, even if I do that, I'm still going to get 3. You guys can see that right there. So let's think through this. If we just pass math.random as the input for math.floor, then we're always going to get 0, because we're always getting a number between 0 and 1, but not including 1, up to 1, right? So if I keep running this, no matter how many times I run it, I'm always going to get 0. So that's why we have to multiply the number, or this value, by a number. And if I want two values, I'm going to multiply it by two, because that'll multiply that first decimal number, and then I can get either zero or one, my two values. If I want to go up to 10 numbers, 10 different numbers, I multiply it by 10. So we go all the way from zero up to nine. So for a coin flip, if I just want to get one of two values back, I'm just going to multiply it by two. So I get back either zero or one. And as long as this is random enough, I should get 0 50% of the time and 1 50% of the time also. We can work with this. All right, let's create a plan for what we have to code now. First, I want to create variables to keep count of how many heads or tails I've gotten. Then, I actually want to flip a coin and change the value of the variable that I created. So if it came up 0, let's say, we'll say that's heads. And if it comes up 1, we'll say that's tails. Finally, I want to tell the user what the final results are how many heads and how many tails came up. So that's my plan. First, let's start with the variables. I'm going to leave the comments in here just to keep track of what I'm doing. We're going to need to declare and initialize a heads counter variable. So let's initialize it to zero at the start. And we're going to need to declare and initialize a tails counter variable, setting it to zero to start. I need to start the line with a keyword to let JavaScript know that these are brand new variables. And in my last series, I explained that it's generally good practice to use the const keyword when declaring your variables. But the problem here is that if we use const, we can never change the value of these variables ever again. So we don't want to use const. We actually want to use the let keyword. I could have also used var, but let's use best 2019 practices. I'll be making a video explaining the difference between let and var in the future. Now it's time for the coin flip. We can take our code from line 3 
and use this as our code for the coin flip. So that's exactly how we perform a coin flip. Let's store this value in a variable called, let's say, flip. So I'm gonna set flip equal to the value that is returned by doing this function, or these couple of functions, math.random and math.floor. I then have to detect if I got zero or one, so I can change the value of heads counter or tails counter. So for that, I'm gonna use a conditional, an if statement. So if flip equals zero, then let's just say that that's heads. So what I can do is I can reset heads, heads counter, I'm gonna set it equal to heads counter plus one. So that's how we're gonna increment heads counter by one. Else, I don't have to check to see if the flip equals one because we know that it's only one of two possibilities. If it's zero, then it's gonna be heads, and if it's not zero, then it's one, tails. There is a shorter way to write lines 12 and 14. What I could do is do tails counter plus equals one. That's like a shortcut for updating a value and just incrementing it by one really quickly. So let me just change that to plus equals and we'll continue by telling the user the final results. So I'm gonna console.log and I'm gonna use backticks so that I can create a, a template literal. And I'm gonna say heads and inside of here, I'm gonna put the value of the variable by using a dollar sign and curly braces. So I can put in my variable here and I'm gonna put heads counter and then I'm gonna create a new line, console.log, and I'm gonna create another template literal, call this one tails, and here I'm gonna put the value of the tails counter. So there we go, I think that should do it. Now if I run my code, I should see, actually first let me get rid of uh, lines one through four, but if I run it now, I should get either one heads or one tails. And if I keep running this, we got one tails, one heads. And if I just keep going back and forth, that is great. It's working. But the problem is I'm only doing one coin flip. So in the next video, we're going to see how we can flip the coin more than one time.